this is the last lesson of the semester, and it's just getting new stuff. So um, it goes here. Um, think about it as a new way of finding area. We learned way back in the day that we can find area under a curve by using little rectangles, yay? How long has it been since we used our little rectangles, right? But the area was the sum of any bases times heights. We And the bases were little tiny delta x's, and the heights were f at different x's in a sequence kind of system. And taken infinitesimally small, or taking the limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity, is what's called a Riemann sum. And that limit then gives you the true area, the infinite area is expressed as an integral. Okay? So we can use definite integrals with <coughs> x as a variable to find an area. Well, did you know? Did you know that you could also use infinite rectangles using y as the variable? Think about it like this. If I had a region like this, and let's say I wanted this region here in blue, yeah? Besides doing rectangles this way, I could do them this way. Now that's the idea of the day. Now in terms of what's going on there, now, the super thin idea isn't horizontally along the x-axis. The super thin is vertically. And because of that, it's not a delta x, it's a delta y. These heights now are dy, and this length, that'll depend on the function. It's varying with the function, but it'll typically be then the function written in y terms. So that's the big idea. If you say, what does this mean? That's area using rectangles this way, where the height is dy and the base is the function written in y terms. Think of it like how wide it is is really like x, and x the equation in y terms or solved for in terms of y. All right. Now then, uh, the signed area then, if they say signed area, then it needs to be positive. And positive area using y as a variable must employ or use this idea here, positive over here. If I said, how far is it? What's this distance? What is it? Six. Okay. How do you get six out of three of those numbers together? Add, subtract, what? Add. Okay. Negative two plus four is six? No, plus subtract. Okay. Negative two minus four, is that six? No, four minus negative two, is that six? So we get a positive by taking right minus left, because that means greater number minus smaller number. Greater number minus smaller number will always be positive. So when you do y as a variable, instead of upper minus lower, which we use for x, we use right minus left, because that will ensure positive numbers. That's a greater number minus a smaller number. Now let's get into what a problem looks like. You with me? Are you ready? Okay. So if, for example, I wanted this region, you might start by asking, why don't I even, if I can use x, why not use x? Why use y? Well, there are a lot of equations that are really more often written in y terms. Think of the basic one. x equals y squared. That can be written as one equation using x as a function of y. But it, if you solve this in terms of x, wouldn't it have to be two different equations, yeah? And so that's why you want to use y, because some graphs are functions of y, not x. 
this one, for example. Um, if I wanted to find the area of this, then right minus left would be the curve on the right side of every segment, and the left is the axis. In other words, there because the function is positive on the right side of the axis, I really wouldn't need to do anything but use the function because it's positive. I'd get a positive area because those values are positive. But here, if I wanted this to be positive, I couldn't just use the function because aren't these negative values? Yeah? Now I'm not talking about the y. I'm talking about this is a negative distance because all these segments are negative values on the left. So to make this positive, I'd have to go from a lower limit of C to an upper limit of B and right minus left. What's the right of every segment? Zero. And the left is lots of different things, but it's the function. I would therefore have to take the opposite of the function to get a positive area, right? Now in this case, I actually have two different areas, so I would need two integrals. The lower region, from C to D. Notice on Y, you're using Y values for your limits of integration. It's not the X values going from left to right. These are Y values, so they need to be C to D. Now, that is that going to be positive already, or do I need to negate it to make it positive? It's in the first quadrant. Is that positive or negative? That's positive. So that one I would have to do anything. I could say f of y minus 0 for right minus left. But uh, f of y is positive, so I'm cool. But the next region, from d to whatever that says, k. I didn't want to use e. Is that, are those positive segment lengths or negative? They're negative. I mean, if, for example, if this is negative 2, then I would get that this is negative 2 to the right. I don't want negative 2 to the right. I need to take the opposite of f of y, or if you like, 0 minus f of y for right minus left. 0 minus f of y, negative f of y, obviously, is negative. And that would give me positive area. Now let's try one that's actually got an exact function. Find the area closed by x equals 4y minus y squared. And we'll Helps to have a graph. I understand that uh, it's going to take a while before we feel 100% comfortable <coughs> with sideways parabolas, but we'll get there. I would fast out to go to some fast. And I know that this is a negative y squared <coughs> is a parabola opening left. Positive y squared is a parabola opening right. Negative y squared is a parabola opening left. Right, so I expect the left would open the parabola, and factoring it gives me the <coughs> x-intercepts or the y-intercepts? The y-intercepts. The y-intercepts are when y is 0, x is 0, and when y is 4, x is 0. Now if I take those and open it right, or left, excuse me, then the parabola looks like that. The area enclosed by that and the y-axis then is this region. Cool? Are you with me? All righty then. Now, using y as a variable means I'm going to do my rectangles this way. And so, setting this up, what are the limits of integration? Zero, four, because I'm looking at the y starting into the region. And the y starting the region is zero to four. Okay. Are these going to be positive as they are, or do I need to negate them? It's going to be positive. The curve is positive, right? E has <coughs> positive value. So I don't need to change the equation. I can just use 4y minus y squared. If I did write minus left, it would be minus 6. So I don't need to write that. I don't want to use it. All right? Now. All that said, the integration goes exactly like you normally do. Uh, what's the antiderivative of 4y? 2y squared. What's the antiderivative of y squared? Y cubed over 3? Yes? Right? 
All right, so if we put in 4, we get 2 times 16, or 32, minus 64 thirds, minus zeros. Common denominator is 3, so 96 minus 64 thirds is 32 thirds. As always, the answer better be positive, <coughs> because they asked for area. What is the area? And that needs to be positive. All right. Now, uh, say you were to find the area enclosed by the x and y axis, and the curve y equals log of x plus y. Uh, y equals log of x, natural log of x. You know that has a vertical asymptote at the y-axis and it has a shape like that, yeah? So what is the plus 5 then? Shifts there. Right, left, up, or down? Left, up. Okay. So that asymptote will be at negative 5, yay? And that intercept that was at 1 will be what? Negative 4. And the shape of the curve will look like that, yeah? Correct me if you disagree with the shape of the curve. Now, um, the region enclosed by the x and y axis then is this region. Now, this will also go to a reason you use or you want to know both x and y. Um, as far as I know, you don't know how to integrate x. If you if you use x, let me see your next thing. If you use x, then you would go from negative 4 to 0 of log of x plus 5. Yeah? And do you know how to integrate log? You do not. So uh, that is a dead end with x because you can't integrate. It's sometimes the case, though, however, you will be able to integrate if you put it in y terms. In y terms, then, you would be talking about rectangles going this way and using y as the variable of integration. So let's start with um, the limits of integration. The limits. The bottom, the lower limit is easy. What is the lower y value of e? The upper region is a little harder. The upper boundary on the region is the top y value. How do you find you don't know y there, do you know x? x is 0, okay. If x is 0, then y is log of 5. So the region goes from 0 to log of 5. Now that's a kind of an ugly upper limit, but it'll all be okay. Trust me, all right? Now, the curve, if I'm going to do this then I need to, first of all, decide what's the curve in y terms, and do I use the normal curve, or do I use the opposite? I'm going to use the opposite, so I need to use the opposite of the function in y terms because I'm on the left-hand side, and I'm going to get negative values. Do you follow? All right, so that's cool. Now, what is f at y, or... What is the function in y terms? If y is log of x plus 5, then solve it for x. What would you do first to solve for x? Would you move the 5 or the log to Up. And what's the inverse of log? E. All right. So e to the y equals x plus 5. So x is e to the y minus 5. Now, we just said, though, that we want to take the opposite of that function. So if the function in y terms is e to the y minus 5, then the opposite is 5 minus e to the y. Do you follow? Okay. 
So we want to integrate 5 minus e to the y with respect to y. Now that you can integrate. You can't integrate log, but you can integrate e. <coughs> what's the antiderivative of 5? Five? 5y. Five and what's the antiderivative of e to the y? e to the y comes 0 to log of 5. When I evaluate at log 5, I get 5 log of 5 minus e to the log of 5 minus 0 minus e to the 0. Simplifying as much as you can without sweating too much, 5 log of 5 is fine the way it is, and there's nothing else like it to combine it. So I guess I'll leave it alone. What's e to the log of 5? It's just 5. And e to the 0 is 1. So all together then, 5 log of 5 minus 5 plus 1 is 5 log of 5. Okay? All right. Let's try a little area between two curves. Now that was area between axes. Now let's talk area between curves. In this bad boy here, when you talk area between curves, we talk about you make positives. When you're using y, it's about right minus left to get positives. So in this case, f was on the right and g is on the left. So by taking f, the f curve minus g curve, you'll get positive bases to your rectangles, and therefore positive area. Cool? So in the second example, which I did not do for you, you're trying to find that total shaded area by always taking right minus left. So this first region here, top limit from where to where? C to D, yeah? And what's right minus left? What's the right side? The right side there is G, and the left side is F. So that lower region, you do G minus F. But when you head off to the upper region, which is from where to where, very limit-wise, D to K, it's a different right. Now the right is this guy, and that guy, that right guy is F, and the left is G. So if you get two different right minus left scenarios, they'll need two integrals. Let's look at a specific case. Say you had x equals y squared, which is a sideways opening for us. It's a rightward opening because it's a positive y squared. y equals x minus 2, as we all know, is a line with a y-intercept of negative 2. Now, the area then is that region, and it makes sense to use y, because these equations, especially the parabola, is only one equation in y terms, but it would be 2 in x terms. So x would be crazy. And in fact, if you used x, you would have to use two different integrals, which we'll talk about later. But we're going to use y. So, um, what do you reckon the first thing we're going to have to do is to get our area? <coughs> After we sketch, I guess. Sketch, then what? Intersection point. Yeah? y squared is equal to? y squared of the first is equal to? y plus 2 y squared minus y minus 2 equals 0, factors 2, y minus 2, y plus 1. So the intersections are at y equal 2 and negative 1. That seems to drive this my picture. Negative 1 there, and the upper limit is a little higher. So it all seems to be making sense. The picture is bold in terms of catching mistakes. So we go from negative 1 to 2. Now set up the integral. Will I need one integral or two? It's always the same right and the same left, yeah? So can I do this in one? 
with y x. You can do it in three. What's the right? <laughs> it's the right, the line or the parabola. Come on. Shall I use x minus 2 or do I need to use y plus 2? y plus 2, the line in y terms minus the parabola in y terms with respect to y. Um, I don't see any combining like terms to make my life easier, so I guess I'll just say this. What's the antiderivative of y? 1 half y squared. What's the antiderivative of 2? Two? 2y. Two What's the antiderivative of negative y squared? y cubed over 3. Here's 1 to 2. Got 2, I get 4 halves plus 4 minus 8 thirds. At negative 1, I get 1 half minus 2 uh, plus 1 third. Okay. 4 halves minus 1 half is 3 halves. 4 minus negative 2 is 6. And negative 8 thirds minus 1 third is negative 9 thirds. Okay, 3 halves plus 6 minus 3 is 3 plus 3 halves. Lee, what do you got? 4 and a half, yay? Do you want to do you want to move the last one before two? Between y equals arc sine and y equals pi over 2x. That's pretty funky. You better be on your game here and take a little critical thought. I bet you've never graphed y equals pi over 2x. You're not going to die. <laughs> Ridiculous. Y equals arc sine. What does it look like? Sine, a sine curve. I know, yeah. Here's, if it wasn't the function, if it wasn't a function, then it could be like that, and I don't see why not. It doesn't say it's a function, so it could be that way. Normally, arc sine is just restricted from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, so I'm thinking it's probably just that piece. X equals y equals pi over 2x. What kind of graph is it? <coughs> a line with a slope of rise pi over 2. You want that together. You want to rise pi over 2 and run 1. Because that is actually a point on the arc sine graph. So you're looking at this graph. Don't think it's this first quadrant. I didn't say it had to be the first quadrant. It's that kind of propeller shape. Cool? All right. Um, one area or two? Two. Normally that would be two integrals. But could I do this with one? By uh, using y. y, that's true, and I was looking for symmetry. Okay, let's use symmetry. So this is the total region. Because there is symmetry there, I could prove those are odd if I wanted to. There is symmetry, and so I can use odd symmetry to times the area from. Now, again, why I would use y, not x, and why it's important to have options. If I used x, then my integral would be the line pi over 2x minus arc sine. And do you know how to integrate arc sine? The answer to that is no. You do not know how to integrate arc sine. You know how to take the derivative of arc sine, but you don't have not how to integrate arc sine. Okay, that also requires integration by parts or ultra value root. Um, that then again is a non-starter. But if you use y, you won't be in arc sine. You'll be in sine. Okay? So, 
let's go here. Let's say we made our rectangles go this way, so they're super thin heights, dy, and the bases. Where is the base? If we want positive, we want right minus left, which is? Right minus left is the sine curve in y terms, which is? Sine y. And what's the left in y terms? x equals 2 or pi y, yes? Are you with me? Okay, so right minus left is the sine curve in y terms, which is sine of y minus 2 over pi y. Beautiful. Sine y minus 2 over pi y dy. What are the limits of integration? From 0 to 1 or 0 to pi over 2? 0 to pi over 2, because we're looking at the y values here if we're using y as our variable of integration, right? Okay, boom, here we go. What is the antiderivative of sine of y? Cosine or negative cosine? Negative cosine, excellent skills. What's the antiderivative of negative 2 pi y? Forget the negative 2 over pi, just it's a constant unit alone. What's the antiderivative of y? y squared over 2, that's actually nice, those two usually will drop. From <coughs> 0 to pi over 2, yay? 2 times negative cosine pi over 2 minus 1 over pi, pi over 2 all squared, weird, minus negative cosine zero, don't you dare just put zero there, you don't know that it's zero until you think about it, minus two over pi times zero, that is exponential. Go slowly on the evaluation, because there's a lot of places to mess up. Where's, what's negative cosine of pi over two? Zero. What about negative one over pi times pi squared over two? Negative pi over four minus, what's negative cosine of zero? Negative one. All together then, that's two times pi over four plus one. Uh, negative pi over four plus one, right? Or negative pi over two plus two. Your answer better doggone well be positive, is it? Are you saying yes, or are you thinking about it? I don't think you thought about it. What's negative pi over 2 about? 1.57. So is 2 minus 1.57 positive? Yeah. Okay. Always. Yes, it is always positive. Well said. All right. Um, now, part of, uh, part of um, a good mathematician's uh, tool is knowing multiple ways to go about a problem and choosing the best way. Now that you have X and Y as options, you're going to have to sometimes make a choice. Should I use X or should I only use Y? Which one will be easier? Uh, let's talk about it here. Let's do one both ways and compare and contrast. Some problems can be done both ways, but one will be easier than the other. So Y equals root X minus 5. Uh, what is the shape of the graph in here? And how is it shifted? Down. Up five, down five, right five, left. Five. Down five. Okay. <coughs> All right, there is the first graph. Negative x plus three is a line with a y-intercept of three and a slope of negative one. Okay, so you're talking about that and the, I wonder if this is done there, they don't know. Yes. You do? Oh. Negative? What is it? Y equals negative x plus five. Do I have that right? Yeah. Oh, thank you for telling me before I did the whole thing. Y equals the square root of x and y equals negative x plus five, like that? Okay, um, and is it the x-axis or the y-axis? Wait to say y-axis? X-axis? Okay, so 
if I say the region, you, so this is one of those things you've got to read very carefully because obviously if you misidentify the region, you will get the wrong answer and waste your time. So where's the region I'm trying to find? The two curves in the x-axis. That is here, A, or here, B. Both. Not both. Only one is using the x-axis. A. The only one that uses the x-axis is B. This would A would be if it read the curves in the y-axis. It doesn't say y-axis, the curves in the x. So we are finding region B. You with me? Okay. Find the area using X and Y. <laughs> If I do this using X, then are my rectangles going to go up and down or side to side? Up and down. And if I stripe this up and down, will I need one integral or two? Okay? You will need an integral for every upper minus lower situation. Do you have one upper minus lower situation or two? You have two. One, you're going to the parabola, then a totally different scenario of going to the line. So if you use x, then you require two integrals, two, okay? One is the area under the parabola. Would I need to negate it or just use, uh, not the parabola, the square root function? Could I just use square root? Does that use upper minus lower? Yes, okay, do you agree that these square root values are positive, so I don't need to negate them or do anything funky, they're going to be positive, right? Then I will have to hand off to the line, which is negative x plus 5. And the second, or the right part of b. Alright, so now what do I need to do? It's hard to evaluate definite integrals if you don't have limits of integration or bounds. So now what do I have to do? Find the intersection points. So square root of x equals negative x plus 5. How did you solve that? For each side. Could you do this by decimal check? Yes, no. x equals negative x plus 5 squared. I hope this comes out clean x equals x squared minus 10x plus 25, yay? So x squared minus 11x plus 25. That's not factorable. What would it have to be for it to be clean? Let's go with... Do you mind if I change this to 2? You, you don't mind, believe me, you're grateful. Okay? So it takes. Change that to 2, which changes this to x squared minus 4x plus 4, which then when you move the x is x squared minus 5x plus 4. Which factors into one and four. Now only one of those is a real intersection point. Um, four would be if we actually had a full parabola, it would be over here. We don't have a full parabola, so x equals one is the only intersection, true intersection point. Are you with me? Are you with me? Okay. So, will you set up the first region from where to where? 0 to? Ay, ay, ay. 0 to 1. And then the next region is 1 to when the line hits the axis. So, when will that line hit the axis? 2. Go from 1 to 2. What's the antiderivative of the first? x to the half antiderivative is 2 thirds x to the 
three halves from zero to one. And the next antiderivative, negative one half x squared plus five x from one to two. The first region is two thirds of one minus zero. The next is negative four halves plus 10 minus negative one half plus five. So I get two thirds uh, minus three halves plus five. The common denominator is six. Four minus nine plus 30. And therefore, 25, 6. That's way too big. Did I make a mistake in here that I'm not seeing? This is a 2, that's why. Could have told me earlier, by the way. Thanks. So. Okay, so plus 2, plus 2x, two so let's go back. Negative 4 over 2 plus, plus 4 minus negative 1 half plus 2. For 2 thirds. Uh, minus 4 halves minus is negative 3 halves. And uh, 4 minus 2 is 2, yeah? 4 minus 9 plus 12 is 7, 6. That's more like it. That's reasonable. Okay. Now, last but not least. That was pretty gross using x, yeah? And that is because there was two different upper minus lowers. But if you use y, then it's right minus left. How many right minus lefts do you see? One. one. There's one right minus left. The right is always the line. The left is always the curve. It's one integral. And therefore, y would be much easier. The limits of integration, what would they be for y? Low to high. Y is low to high. The low is zero and the high is one. One. Okay. Right minus left. What's the right? The right is the line in y terms, right? So if y equals x minus or negative x plus two, if the line is y equals negative x plus two, then in y terms it's x equals Two minus y, yeah. Do you agree? Okay. So the right is two minus y. The left. What's the left? The curve. So what if y equals the square root of x? So what's that in y terms? Y squared. All right. So if we integrate that, what's the antiderivative of two? Antiderivative of y and the antiderivative of y squared. Square root of one. So we get two minus one half minus one third minus a bunch of zeros. That's common denominator six. That's twelve minus uh, three minus two. Twelve minus five is seven six. And you can see now. And she'll get the same answer. But one way is definitely easier than the other. And I don't, I thought I had a calculator problem in there. Huh. We could have had you try that at the calculator. Oh well. All right. We'll practice it tomorrow. Questions on 66? Four? One? Twenty-four, not four. 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 Oh, four and four.
four one fourteen. Fourteen. Five. 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 Number four, you should use some of it. Where's your you? You could do, you is either this whole thing or just the x squared, but I recommend you do the whole thing. It'll make your life easy. So use the u there. The du is 2 pi x dx. You only have an x dx. So I would probably call this the u over 2 pi. So that the integral becomes cosine of u, the u over 2 pi, which that's 2 pi to the dot point. Then change the limits. If this is true, then when x is 0, u is 0. And when x is 1, u is there's your new problem. You're off and running. One. Find the work done. Work, remember, is the antiderivative or the accumulation of force over distance. So if the force is x squared minus 3x, and you're moving it from 1 meter to 5 meters, that's all you got to do. The answer is one joules. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In 24, the idea is you isolate the root. This one, I hope you recognize that. That is a circle of you know, However, you can vote in the library or you can vote online. Help recognize your favorite authors and books. However, instead of the whole circle, it's only the top half because of the positive root and only the right half. So it's actually one. This represents one fourth of the area of the circle with radius A. So it's B over A times one fourth of pi R squared. Fourteen is straight up use of just like your first example in your notes yesterday. Kylie Graper is an outstanding member in band. Fourteen. She is someone who would go the extra mile to make sure the program is successful. She has played multiple instruments in Dublin's band, but most importantly, she is a leader by example. She is one of the strongest work ethics that I've ever had the privilege of teaching. Kylie is a rock star.
we can cause this force in our room. Also, don't forget to come to the improv show this Friday night. If you do, that will help cause every person there for step seven. That's all your analysis. Have a great day. Okay, so to do first two words, you would need to find the derivative and use the two facts. Do that first fact to see that A is negative 2. Do the second. To see that B is negative 2. Two days before the test, is best day to come in, not the day before the test. So, come period is the option. Oh. <laughs> Have a great day.